I will come back. I hope you have enjoyed the day so far and have had a good break. Um, I would like to start the next session. Um, we have a, a plenary talk um, next, uh, given by Xavier Litadon from CA and Eurofusion. Are you Xavier there? You are muted at the moment. Yes, I am muted. Yes, I am connected. Can you hear me? Um, yes, I can hear you. Um, okay, so and I can see your slides. Good. Um, looks beautiful. So <laughs> the room is yours. Okay. So you, I can start? Yes, please. Okay. So first of all, thank you. Thank you for the program committee for this invitation. And thank you for joining after this break. So this afternoon, I will give you an update of the, what we call the Eurofusion Theory and Advanced Simulation Coordination, which is the acronym of ETASC. First of all, I wish to acknowledge uh, my co-workers. Uh, it's an activity which started two or three years ago, and we have created an ETASC scientific board which shared by Frank uh, Yenko and myself as co-chair, and you see the name. We had a pilot phase for task, which we call theory and simulation and verification validation task. We uh, would like to acknowledge the task leaders and the Eurofusion project leader and the PMG members. So as you know, we are in this uh, full swing preparation of what we call Horizon Europe with the next framework program, the ninth framework program for, for Europe. And as high level objective, we wish that Europe maintain an ambitious program with high level of leadership and coordination in the development of fusion energy. We wish to play an important role in the ITER scientific exploitation that uh, Alberto described this morning while we should complete or finalizing the demo conceptual design. And during this phase, when some of the key events will be that phase, will be jet will be phased out, while GT60SA will start its full operation and also it will start its operation. In this process, we implement uh, the fusion roadmap, which has been updated in 2018, and you can find the link here. And for this workshop, I extract one key sentence from this uh, roadmap, which will highlight uh, this workshop, which say that a strong theory and modeling program is essential because we recognize that empirically based prediction are uncertain in unexplored environments like ITER and particular demo. And this will be a stronger focus than foreseen earlier. It's true that we, for instance, the chat, ITER like world at the Azex and Seng world, we have discovered new things which we were not foreseen. And this is what we call the, um, uh, the uh, new unforeseen uh, event uh, where we need uh, theory based prediction to progress. The major change during this uh, next framework program, Horizon Europe, is like Alberto has said, is that we will move from ITER construction to ITER operation. And we wish to secure the success of the future ITER operation. And we wish to prepare the ITER generation of scientists and engineers. And you see the date where we will move from construction to the operation phase. And we will go it with in a stage approach, which has been detailed by, by Alberto. So we wish to prepare the ITER operation for its success. And we wish to complete the demo design. And all this activity should be done with systematic simulation with different level of sophistication. Here, I wish to stress and be important in the, the theory simulation when fusion will enter and is entering with, in particular with ITER in the nuclear era. We have, we will move to nuclear facility with safety and nuclear licensing issue where the, the people in charge of licensing the facility will ask detailed question, which needs to be to be answered. We have to move to an efficient and reliable rapid design prototyping for power plants. And we believe that with systematic modeling, we can improve 
a mastering of the uh, fusion facility operation and save millions of euro of empirical developments, which avoid risky approach, because you will know in advance where you should zone or the domain of operation that you have to avoid. We know that on ITER, we will have limited experimental time, time for making all this exploration and for, for instance, for developing control room al algorithm. And we know that the operating cost of this large facility is, uh, is significant. We are talking about 70 million per year for jet and ITER in the order of 300 million euro per year. Mastering operation will also ensure the machine protection to avoid, for instance, that runaway electrons will uh, destroy the first wall, which will be, in this, in this case, saving billion. via safety control and validated algorithm. So the theory and simulation, both in the engineering and physics domain, has potential to accelerate the development of fusion energy. And we must prepare this transition with a coordinated, comprehensive theory, modeling, verification, <clears throat> and validation program by maximizing the benefit out of our facility investment. So the challenge that we wish to address in this next framework program, as summarized along these five uh, QE bullets, is to get validated predictive capability of the LH transition and pedestal physics in ITER and DEMO. And when I say DEMO, I will always include the ELIAS approach. Um, so it includes uh, the modeling of the ELMS, the control and avoidance, validated predictive capability for heat exhaust in ITER and DEMO, which will include conventional and alternative diverter configuration, integrated uh, scientific work on plasma wall interaction in ITER and DEMO, integrated scientific work on disruption for ITER and DEMO, and integrated scientific work on burning plasma for ITER and DEMO, because you know, as you know that uh, ITER will be first of any kind uh, burning plasma where the alpha particle will be dominant and we need to be ready to understand this physics. So all this, I uh, will say, background or general context or evolution uh, in, in the world let us to uh, develop uh, this e-task uh, activity, coordination activity, and which I summarize here on the general principle, where we recognize that innovative theory and simulation research is performed when it is driven by the scientists and engineers themselves. But nevertheless, we believe that the production of new portfolio of Eurofusion standard software requires a more direct approach and to accommodate both, we have developed a structure where we will launch, and we have already launched some pilot phase of tasks, scientific tasks, which include theory, simulation, verification, validation, through and the support of what we call advanced computing hubs, which provide the computer science, the scientific computing, the data management, the code integration, the software engineers to support the TSVV task and the entire your fusion theory and simulation program. And this is the objective to have this new portfolio of your fusion uh, software, which are in a sense much more at the professional level to be transferred and used for it. Uh, in, a, in a schematic way, we believe that we have now set up a coordinated decentralized and centralized effort in a virtuous cycle between the two where you have the TSV Vitas, which are attached to the key physics topics and addressing some of the key uh, Eurofusion mission activity. The advanced computing hubs for the core integration uh, using the IMAS that has been detailed by Alberto, the code development, the use of HPC and mid-range facility and the data, data analysis, including artificial intelligence and management. And this will be the output, will be the models that will be transferred, will be used for ITER and DEMO, which should, in a sense, impact uh, our involvement in the ITER exploitation. So an update is that uh, on the advanced computing hubs, we have set, issue a call for proposal within Eurofusion for hosting up to five uh, hubs in, in Europe plus uh, the Jet Data Center, which has been already selected, which will be in DTU in Denmark. And we foresee three categories of activity, which concern the high-performance computing, 
to develop code parallelization, performance optimization, GPU uh, for towards the exact scale modeling, the integrated modeling and control. So it's the adaptation of the codes to the IMAS uh, ITER uh, framework and the code integration. And we wish to move also to data management because in long pulse operation, you will have petabyte of data and that you need to process uh, using new tools. Uh, and this is also a, a new field that we, we are pushing. As I say, DTU Denmark has been already selected to host the JET data, and we are in the process to finalize the implementation agreement. If we come back in terms of history, uh, we make significant progress in the uh, computing uh, facility. And together with this progress, which is summarized here in terms of petaflops, we have also increased our fidelity uh, model capability. If you recall in the 90s with the gigaflop, we were we simplify physics in simplified geometry and focusing on core aspect. In the 20, in 2000s, it were at the level of the teraflops where we increased the realistic physics in toroidal geometry and also trading edge physics and electron scale. And we move to the petaflops, which is multi-scale, multi-physics simulation, and core and edge are still treated separately. And for the coming years, we will move in the exaflops, exact which will allow the whole device uh, modeling, going from the wall to, to the core, including turbulence, fast particle, MSG, heating, and plasma wall interaction. So this will give us the basis of extrapolating to, towards uh, ITER and, and DEMO for, for uh, the operation of ITER and the design of, of DEMO. On the theory and simulation task, uh, they, as I say, they are aligned with the fusion roadmap priority and mission. We wish to maximize the huge investment that we put in a facility and Europe also is putting in it. Eh? For this coming framework, we have issued 14 uh, tasks, 14 subjects, which address it operation and demo and should advance our understanding and predictive capability to develop this high quality suite of Eurofusion standard software to model the data from the Eurofusion facility and then to extrapolate towards uh, future facilities. So the task, that we are working on and we will start working on uh, are uh, shown on these slides where you recognize the high topics that address the physics of LH transition pedestal. We will also address uh, the understanding of this new discovery of configuration with negative magnetic configuration. Then the particle and heat exhaust, which will be treated both in fluid, gyrofluid and geokinetic aspect the neutral gas dynamics in the edge, impurity transport, the plasma wall interaction, the modeling of the transient events, which will include both the helms and the disruption, the runaway physics, the physics of the burning plasma and the fast ion that Geronimo Garcia has detailed this, this morning, the integrated modeling, the stereo optimization, the turbulence incinerator, where we wish to have also synergy between physics in physics between stereo and tokamaks and the multi-fidelity system code for, for demo. So in this task, the goal is to provide validated predictive capabilities uh, to turn research code into professional and widely used uh, code tools, develop new uh, codes to fill some EU gaps. We wish to, to adapt the multi-fidelity modeling approach going from first principle based model, reduced model and novel multi-fidelity approach, as well as validation, verification and certificate quantification. We have the chance in Europe to have a wide set of facility where the codes and our uh, prediction can be uh, validated. Validation and application will involve the wide range of existing and future facility. We have, and we decide to keep flex flexibility in our approach to have tasks of different nature, different size, uh, and could be launched at any time, uh, pending resources uh, during these coming frameworks. And as I say, the advanced computing us will provide this uh, support. I highlight I here uh, a generic slide on this multi approach, where you see the this ladder in terms of uh, 
in the red arrow where you go from more simple physics to a, a more complete uh, physics model. And of course, it at the expense of uh, increasing the simulation. So the, 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 the approach and the trend is to get the most of the physics at a lower cost in terms of, of uh, simulation. This is something which is used in, uh, in many fields in, in, in industry when you for, want to, for instance, design aircraft or wind for aircraft, where you need to have both high fidelity models, which can be uh, also where you can derive surrogate models and you can optimize uh, your design for, for the aircraft. And you have also low fidelity model. And this works and needs to, to work uh, together. Uh, and I think it's a good example of an, an analogy, I will say, from what we want to do in, in, in Tokamax. We will operate a facility with simplified tools, low fidelity models, but we will make the analysis and the understanding using higher fidelity models. And we can also, from this high fidelity model, derive database where we can build uh, simplified models, uh, like it has been uh, shown also by, by uh, using neural networks. Um, so both needs to work together and need to be complemented to each other. So in the last, I will say, part of this uh, presentation, I will give you uh, today some already uh, results that we have obtained in this phase. It has been agreed in, in this uh, framework, of this CITAS framework. It has been already agreed to initiate, to start this initiative before the launch of uh, FP9. Uh, in 2019, we have uh, five pilot, we call it pilot task which were initiated in 2019 for two years. Uh, and you see the task and the task leader. And, uh, and I will summarize at a high level the results uh, which have been obtained. And you will see and you have understood that some of the tasks will continue uh, in FP9 to, to, to advance on the progress which has been obtained in 19 and 20. The first task is on the LH transition and pedestal uh, physics led by Tobias Holler. On electron runaway in tokamak disruption with massive gas injection by Hola and Prius. Fast code for the calculation of neoclassical toroidal uh, viscosity in tokamak, that's Jose Luis uh, Velasco, which was a smaller task, uh, which used also analytic theory and makes synergy between tokamak and serrators. The neutral gas dynamics in VH, which will be let on the longer term, coupled to a uh, new initiative of developing a European edge boundary codes developed uh, and led by Patrick Tamar. The one on the edge is led by, by initially led by Frederick uh, Schluss and then by Dimitri Borotin. So I will start with the LH transition in pedestal physics. So you see here the key objective in this beautiful Greek uh, temple which go from um, geokinetic uh, advanced uh, for tokamak edge, L mode characterization prior to the L to H transition, study of the H mode pedestal after the LH transition, investigation of the uh, radial electric field source and dynamics and the other end then uh, the, the validation process. All of that will move to an LH transition characterization using multi-fidelity approach, either few and reduce model or gyro kinetic and fluid model to be in position to predict uh, the LH transition, which is, and the pedestal physics, which is uh, critical for extrapolating the results to, to it there. We have learned that with the metallic world, the physics, the pedestal physics, and the LH transition that change uh, significantly. So key, some of the results on the, I will not highlight all the results along these uh, various pillars of this uh, project, because it will be a full seminar, but I extract a few of them. First one is on the characterization of the pedestal micro instability using multi-codes, multi-machine characterization. This has been done on JET, where we have revealed uh, using the gene codes uh, through a scan of the pedestal parameter of the jet eater light wall, we have revealed the importance of ETG modes, ETG modes, uh, which were dominant uh, instability in the, in the, in the, at the edge. We are working on and try to understand uh, if they contribute to the, the edge transport, that it's uh, important. And we have made some comparison in jet pedestal between toroidal and slab calculation. On ASDEX, uh, 
the simulation has been performed in seeded impurity discharges. And you have here a calculation of the growth rates uh, versus normalized radius and Kawai and Rostar, where you, uh, uh, where you have the calculation of the ETG in, in blue and in red, the ITG uh, turbulence. And what has been shown here, probably due to the role of the CEDEF impurity, is that when you inject argon, the ITG may grow in, 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 the, in the core of, uh, in the pedestal of this uh, type of plasma. Um, as I say, we have also worked in this project on negative uh, triangulity mag magnetic configuration and try to understand uh, this type of plasma, which are very promising for, for, for ITER because they provide L mode edge with a good core confinement, typically a factor of two above. Uh, normal scaling. So this has been done using OP5, uh, which is able now to simulate the plasma up to the very edge of the plasma, but assuming adiabatic electrons. Uh, and this has been simulated uh, uh, using TCV discharges. Uh, we have not found yet in this simulation the uh, reduction of the transport in the edge. I mean, you, you see the case with uh, negative triangularity, which in fact increase of the transport at the edge. And we believe since TCV discharge are in the trap electron mode dominated, uh, we believe that these modes are, are essential uh, for explaining the physics in the negative triangularity. And this needs to be included uh, the kinetic electron needs to be included uh, to capture this uh, transport reduction in this uh, type of regime. Another uh, uh, important success was uh, the, with Gisela was to characterize the development of the radial electric field and the formation of the radial electric field at the separatrix in full F uh, kinetic simulation when in the simulation you include the poloidally localized uh, toroidal li limiter, uh, assuming still a diabetic electron and force bomb uh, jar bomb condition. And what you see in this graph, the radial electric field versus the normalized radius, you have the pedestal edge here, and you see that the radial electric field is flat without a limiter. Uh, and when you, you add this, uh, on axis metry uh, limiter, you observe the development of the radial electric field in the narrow region uh, at close to the separatrix with together an observation of the steepening of the pressure profile. So it's recalling or a reminiscence of what we observe for the development of the HMO trans transport barrier and their ongoing comparison with, with measurements. Uh, as I say in my introduction, we are also working on developing a um, reduced model and compare, compare this reduced model to a more uh, high fidelity model. And this is done by comparing Gisela, GKW with Qualikis in two distinctive uh, turbulence ITG regime. We found that there were a good agreement between this reduced model and the full uh, kinetic model in a strong drive case, which is shown in red, where you see the heat, heat, heat flux calculated with Gisela, the one with G, GKW in blue, and the one with Qualikis uh, in red, whereas there are still discrepancy in the near marginal uh, uh, turbulence uh, regime. So this is important. Now I move to another topics which was a calculation of the neoclassical toroidal viscosity for tokamak accelerators, where we try to develop synergy in physics between these two fields. Uh, you know that non-axial symmetry magnetic field uh, can lead to neoclassical uh, damping of the toroidal rotation. This provides, um, uh, and it's extremely important to, to calculate that because the toroidal rotation uh, play a, an important role in many of the physics aspects. And this should be done in various collegiality regimes. So a suite of code has been developed. You see the and, and TV versus the collegiality in different collegiality regime, corresponding to the plateau and super banana regime. And this has been uh, calculated also for, for SDEX, versus the numerous radius with this uh, suite of code. And we are in the process of comparing with experiments and, uh, and this importance of uh, this aspect. 
on the disruption and runaway electrons, uh, which is an important topic for Europe. You know that we install an SPI injector on jet, and we need to understand uh, the, the physics behind. So for that, it's, we recognize that it is a multi-scale disruption problem, which involves both nonlinear resistive 3D MHD of the thermal quench and the generation, acceleration, and of and radial transport of a relativistic electron runaway spanning energy scale across six, six decades. So when you, you want to combine the two problems, which remains an open challenge, you need to make uh, assumption in one of them. And uh, but this is uh, the challenge of this task is to develop a comprehensive theoretical and numerical model approach to apply to this uh, runaway dynamic in disruption in non-equilibrium atomic physics in the case where we inject impurity and to apply for MST, jet, and ITER in a consistent ma manner. And to develop a model uh, where runaway are mitigated by this massive material gas injection with this SPI and to develop also to make suggestions for this important challenge uh, for improving the runaway mitigation and to have synthetic uh, radiation diagnostics tool for the, the validation aspect. And I will illustrate with uh, the recent modeling of the 3D uh, nonlinear MHD simulation of the thermal quench uh, we using the JORAC code in the case where we observe, uh, you see the the 2D plots of the temperature, radiation, current, and the point carry section on magnetic configuration, where you observe that the mat material injection, uh, the argon in this uh, jet case, trigger a kink instability, which cool the edge and leads to a magnetic field stochastization, complete stochastization of the magnetic field. And we are working on approaching a more realistic conductivity and viscosity to capture, you know, at the end, you have this uh, current spike uh, during this uh, thermal quench, and this needs to be understood. And the, the magnitude of this current uh, plasma current spike has not been fully reproduced because for that, you need to approach and make development towards realistic conductivity and viscosity, which require more and more uh, HPC uh, footage. On the runaway uh, electron uh, simulation, our aim is to develop synthetic diagnostics uh, and to systematically compare uh, to, to experiments. And you know that synchrotron emission provides information on runaway dynamics. Uh, within your refusion, we have installed uh, these uh, diagnostics on many facilities, uh, on NASDAQ, on FTU, on TCV. And we have tools where we have four couplings, forward modeling and runaway distribution reconstruction, which are used in the synthetic diagnostics to compare directly with experimental data. And you see this beautiful image of the, in the case of NASDAQ, so the runaway distribution, radial distribution reconstruction, where you have the experimental data and the similar uh, synthetic reconstruction of, of this image which means that the shape being similar, you have understood part of the physics. On the, the other project that we have initiated in 2019 was on the modeling of the neutral gas dynamic, which will be part of the large effort that we're doing on the plasma exhaust. And for that, we recognize that there is a hierarchy of uh, neutral models, which go from, uh, again, the more simplified model to the more accurate model at the expense, of course, of increased computational uh, effort. So we have the uh, fluid uh, model for the, for the neutral, which are efficient, direct coupling to, to the plasma equation. Uh, and they are basis for the hybrid methods and they provide good accuracy in highly collisional regime. And in the extreme case, you have all the kinetic a fully kinetic model with some Monte Carlo simulation. We provide a complete uh, physical description uh, and, and their flexibility with respect to geometry, collisional processes, source boundary condition, but are extremely expensive in terms of, uh, of computational effort. And we try to develop and we are developing uh, and improving uh, on these hybrid kinetic models where you try to decompose, for instance, distribution of the neutral, which is shown here with a part which could be treated in blue as a fluid part and the part which could be treated in red as a, using the kinetic part. And which improve 
the uh, accuracy, uh, the approved, improved the computational, computational efficiency while keeping a, a strong model accuracy, which I will highlight in the next slide. So in this, uh, we have a 3D uh, high fidelity simulation of neutral gas dynamics for, for ITER are extremely and demo are extremely uh, challenging. And you see here the, the grid for this type of calculation. That's the reason why we need to develop clever meter for doing that, which are both addressing the, the, the relevant physics and which is also accurate as much as possible. So the effort we are working is on the physics aspect is to bring fluid and hybrid models for atoms as close as possible to the full kinetic description to account for drift, neutral neutral collision and multi specialized uh, effects like hydrogen, deuterium, tritium and DT. And investigate the potential of fluid hybrid model for molecule and link up to date uh, the up to date database for IMNS. On the computation aspect, we wish to optimize the hybrid al algorithm to improve computational speed and investigate the potential of kinetic diffusion Monte Carlo uh, scheme. It has been recently, I think, published by Austin some comparison. This is the ion energy at the diverter target, shown here, this is the coordinate along the flux tub, cube, sorry, and you see the difference between the full uh, line, which is kinetic uh, kinetic calculation, uh, you have uh, the, the, the fluid uh, simulation, the dashed line, and the open circle correspond to the hybrid simulation. And what is beautiful is that with this hybrid uh, kinetic fluid uh, simulation, you can recover the precision of the full kinetic simulation. And as again, uh, you gain in terms of uh, computational time. On the last part is on the, the development of uh, a major challenge on the development of the European edge code for reactors. And you know that demo will push us to the power exhaust challenge further even compared to, to, to ITER with strong constraints, constraints on operational space and with not a lot of margin and uncertainties on the prediction. She summarized here, where you see the power uh, of the alpha and the axillary power in blue for demo, the radiation uh, po power, uh, the power to get the LH transition and the power at the diverter. And you see that uh, you need to be in H mode. And so the core will have to be uh, a significant fraction have to be radiated in the core and in the diverter. And you see uh, the difference compared, compared to it which will put us in a different domain of operation and that needs to be to be simulated if we wish to extrapolate, for instance, all the results we will get in the OPEX upgrade uh, facility that has been launched. On the existing tools, some of the missing physics is in fact hidden by three parameters like the lambda Q, he has the flux limits. And uh, we are not enough computationally efficient for, for the demo case, which require for an MST facility few days, whereas for demo, we are dealing with months of operation to get the results. So the yeah, high-level objective- A couple, of, mi task, couple uh, of minutes. Yes, is yes. to ensure predictive capability for heat and particle exhaust uh, up to reactor relevant condition, to design and physics studies. It's not an engineering code in a multi fidelity approach. And we have hierarchy of models. Uh, user can compromise versus fidelity versus computing times, designed to run on exascale architecture for large cases, and aim to uh, sh as short as possible the duration. And this requires simultaneous progress on physics, algorithm, and HPC optimization, size, uh, optimization. and this task is led by Patrick Tamin at the moment. But the key challenge is to develop plasma models which are compatible with reactor condition. We have to deal with four decades of collisionality from diverter to, to pedestal beyond the domain of applicability of the standard fluid models. And we have made uh, significant progress on that recently uh, uh, by Frey, Georgia, and Ritchie, which is again been submitted on the calculation of the ITG linear growth rate versus collisionality when you go. ITG versus the collisionality, the low collisionality. And you see here the collisionless limit in full kinetic simulation 
And when you develop uh, end moment gyro, gyro fluid uh, simulation, when you increase the number of uh, moments in your, in your simulation, which is shown here, you can recover the full kinetic uh, uh, limit, which is extremely good progress, which means that you can use this uh, gyro fluid uh, model uh, for, uh, for this type of simulation apply it for, for demo, which will speed up also the, um, the, the, the calculation. Need to integrate reactor relevant uh, physics in terms of turbulence uh, to be consistent with the demo environment and neutral impurity. Optimize the code for HPC and optimize the algorithm and computational needs. We are working on developing uh, advanced parallel discretization method based on the flux coordinate independent approach, which was developed seven years ago, really by Aviri. Uh, which will reduce uh, on the computational needs uh, by a better mesh resolution and type step. And we are also working this pilot phase on hybrid discontinuous galerking approach, which are under development. So this is my last two slides, is that for making this progress, and especially for the progress on the this boundary exhaust simulation, the HPC efficiency is critical. We recognize that we have to face nearly two orders of magnitude larger than the current record for the computational fluid dynamics, the CFD simulation, when you wish to include together, that's the meaning of the plus, the neutral impurity in the realistic geometry, the 3D turbulence from the edge of the core in a demo size machine. And you can estimate when you have to go to the Lamo radius, ion Lamo radius for a large scale machine like 10 meters. You have to estimate when you need to deal for a 3D domain, you are talking about 200 billion of degree of freedom that needs to be, to be solved, which is higher than what has been done in fluid simulation. So I come to, to my conclusion. Theory and advanced simulation are essential, as I say, for, for, for the future. And I think as found home within your refusion within this eTask initiative. Theory and advanced simulation can save millions in operational costs and help to ensure machine production has a potential to accelerate the development of fusion energy. And between the synergy between this task and the advanced computing hubs, we wish to develop validated predictive capability for key challenges in fusion research for both ITER operation and demo design. And the progress we will make will rely and should adapt to the evolution of the computing resources for large scale simulation and integrated modeling. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Javier. That was impressive. <laughs> and thank you for your vision in setting up this program. Really, really important. And the key statement that modeling and theory is so important for our next steps can't be sort of under, underestimated. Um, the chat is getting very lively, I see. So um, there's a question from uh, Farah Hariri. Um, first of all, um, is it planned to have a common steering or advisory board for all of these e-task computing hubs? Uh, thank you. So that's a good question. Yes, this is part of the uh, ITA scientific board, we will oversee both the activity which is done in the uh, TSVV task and in this advanced computing girls that will be set up in 2021. Because we don't want that this activity is done separately because I say there's, there's need to integrate uh, uh, the two. Okay. The next question is, do you see it as an opportunity to centralize the effort of code development for the fusion community in Europe. I mean, your overall overall feeling for this. I, I, I believe that with this initiative, which took two years, in fact, to, 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 to set up, I believe this is a way to make this effort I don't know if it will be centralized, but much more coordinated. Uh, and initially, it's true that uh, two years ago, we were forcing to have a kind of centralized place, but it was not possible. That's the reason why we came up with this idea of uh, having a structure which is decentralized for 
producing the science through the TSVV, which are in the various CU labs, and a structure which is more centralized, which is this advanced computing hubs in different places in Europe. But we believe that we need to have this strong coordination, which will be centralized through the CETA scientific board. Okay, thanks. So then there is a question from Thomas Hayward regarding standard software. Can you elaborate a little bit what scope is planned for this uh, standard software? Well, the scope is we discover that uh, we, we know that we have a lot of codes which has been developed by physicists or researchers, which are maybe not at the level of professional codes. And this the idea is that when we will transfer this code, uh, I strongly believe that ITER will need codes and people. And, and when we will transfer the codes to ITER, we believe that they need to be much more uh, standard at the level of uh, moving towards this IMAS structure. And they need to be much more professional in the sense. And this is a reason why we, we, we set up, um, I don't have a slide for that, but we, we agree on, on the definition of what it is a standard uh, code, I mean, uh, a more professional code. And this is a culture that we want to inject within the fusion community, which means that we, hope also in this advanced computing hubs to attract uh, people who are coming outside the, the, the fusion field and in the TSV that they could bring uh, this expertise in terms of uh, standardization. That's, that's really important. Then a uh, follow-up question on that. Um, will Eurofusion lead software development for these codes? And, uh, well, can I, uh, will these codes be guarantees available? I mean, uh, will they be available for European researchers in general? Or how, how, how do you vision this? Yes, yes. The idea is that when the, this effort will be uh, funded by Eurofusion, by Europe, this code need to be need to be accessible to all the uh, EU researcher. That's uh, the key point, the key point. We don't want to have code which are only used by the one who have developed or a small team which has developed the code. And this is the reason why it needs to go towards more standardization. So that in principle for this huge exercise on validation, this code needs to be Used also by the end users, experimentalists, or so this 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 is the effort. If we wish that all that the code are used by a broader community and not by the small team who is uh, developing the code, and it's true that not everyone wish to play this game uh, because it means that of course what you are doing is completely transparent, open, I would say, and available to all your fusion uh, users. Uh, but I think it's important for, 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 for the future. And then, um, of course, uh, for the external partners outside Europe, a license agreement will have to be, to be set up. When we will agree that a code will be transferred to ITER, as you know, the intellectual property will be shared with all the ITER partners in this case. And we wish in the long run that this effort could be transferred to ITER so that this code will be used also by uh, everybody in, in, in the, within the community, within the fusion community, and yeah. Okay. Um, at the moment, I don't see more questions in the chat, so I have one myself, perhaps, well, of interest uh, for everybody joining, at least from Europe. So in the, in the present setup, uh, framework eight, we had this uh, high level support team uh, that opened calls and people could bid for support from HPC side. So what is the new um, new structure? We have the TSVV task coming, but will there be more calls that people can sort of ask for this support? How do you see this? Well, uh, this, yes, there is a change in the sense that in, in the past it was an open call for this support but now we wish to have something that the support is provided more on the top down approach so we have defined the high level objective which i showed 
and the, the advanced computing odds will provide support to mainly the TSVV tasks that we're initiating. Because we, we, we have agreed on the highest level for supporting the roadmap or for retail on key objectives that we want to progress on the coming five to seven years, which are on pedestal, disruption, plasma exhaust. And we wish to focus our effort on that rather than uh, distributing the effort on a large number of activity, which with limited resources will dilute our impact and our effort uh, to, towards ZTE. Having said that, the situation will evolve. So it means that maybe in two or three years time, if we have completed some of the tasks, the task on the NTV has been complete and we will move to another one. But the idea is not to progress in parallel on all the code on, on everything at the same time. Thank you so much, uh, Xavier. Now time is up, unfortunately, so we need to stop here. Thank I you. would like uh, I, I give the floor to Eddie uh, Eddie Belter Sanchez for this room, and then we open the um, parallel session room two for the talks by Albert Gutierrez Milla, Diego Ferreira, and Julita Inca Chiroque. So um well. From my side, uh, well, see you later. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this session. And good afternoon to everybody. In this session, we have uh, three presentations related with two simulations in Stellarator. Yeah. But thank you for, thank okay, you for the ahead. introduction, Eddie. Uh, the outline of the talk would be the following. I'll first explain the motivation. Then I will give a bit of information about TG2 and its MBA system. Then I'll present the plasma scenarios of the simulations. Then the simulation details itself and the results, of course. And finally, I'll present the conclusions. So uh, the main motivation for, the, for this study was to interpret and to model the MBA experiments uh, in TG2 using ASCOT5. Uh, this is the, the MBI studies is not the first time that has been carried out in, in TJ2, but the, the code used was Fafner2, which is a guidance center code, and we decided to move into a more modern tools to take the advantage of new code developments and also to get a, a closer contact with the rest of the community. As ASCOT5 is becoming a very widely spread code for these for these purposes in both tokamax and and accelerators and also from the tj2 side in turn we can contribute to validate the code predictions in in non axisymmetric configurations so uh, tj2 is a flexible heliac accelerator with a major radius of 1.5 meters and a, and a plasma radius of 20 centimeters with a magnetic field of one tesla in the axis uh, it's equipped with two MBIs. The first one, MBI1, is co-injected, and the second one, MBI2, is counter-injected. The maximum energy of the neutrals injected is 31.5 kilo electron volts, and the energy fractions are shown here in this table below. And in this picture, you can see how the MBIs are placed with respect to the vacuum chamber and the coils in TJ2, and also you see that uh, TG2 is also equipped with two ECRH lines for heating. Uh, well, uh, for this study, we have focused our attention in high density MBA plasmas. Uh, so, in this sense, uh, in order to obtain the profiles, we have simulated an actual experimental discharge with increasing density, and we have chosen three uh, time cuts of this simulated discharge whose energies, as you can see in these pictures, uh, goes from a bit more than three to a bit more than six times 10 to the 19 particles per square meter, increasing with, the, increasing with time. And as the density increases, the electron temperature decreases from 300 electron volts to 180 electron volts. And the, the ion temperature is more or less constant for the, uh, for the three cases uh, with a value of 160 electron volts, approximately. 
Um, so the dissimulation in this study, we have uh, simulated full orbit collisional simulations with 200, uh, 200,000 markers. We have injected an MVI power of 500 kilowatts and we follow the neutrals until they are either they, they hit, either hit the wall or they are thermalized. And thermalize is defined as when the energy of the fast marker is reduced to twice the ion temperature of the plasma, uh, the, the marker is considered thermalized. The equilibrium comes from BMEC plus standard and the simulations have been performed in the, in the facility Marconi, specifically in the partition A3, which is equipped with Intel Xeon Skylake processors. And we have used four nodes. Um, each of the nodes has 48 CPUs. And during two hours, which accounts for 384 CPU hours per simulation. And in this upper plot on the right here, you can see uh, the radial position of the marker uh, during the trajectory in orange and, the, and in blue, the magnetic field that the, the marker is, is seeing. And as you can see, this highly rippled character of TG2 makes the full orbit formalism uh, more accurate for these kind of simulations. And uh, yes, I am here you can see a cartoon of a trajectory within the plasma. Okay, so the first thing that we need to, to get the distribution function of the fast ions uh, is to create the fast ions. And uh, we do this with the ASCOTS module DDMBI, which simulates the flight of the neutrals from the injector, from the last grand of the injector they travel to, uh, to the, towards the plasma and they are either ionized or produce a shine through. Here you can see the, the radial distribution of the initial markers and there's no much difference between the three cases. And, the, and in the, on the right, you can see the, the pitch angle distribution of the markers uh, and, and you can see that the the, the highly parallel character of the MBI injection in TG2, which results in all the markers being, being born as passing. Um, af afterwards, we follow the, the markers using ASCOT, and this is, these are some plots of the distribution function. And you can see here uh, at the bottom left uh, that the, the main feature is that there's a reduction of the, of the number of, of, of particles, of fast particles, uh, is the integral of these curves. Uh, they decrease where as, as density increases. And this is, uh, this is due to the higher collisionality of denser plasmas. So the collisionality, uh, as you know, is proportional to the density and inversely proportional to the temperature. So the higher the density and the lower the temperature, the higher the collisionality, particles live faster or thermalize earlier. That's why we have less fast ions. Um, and on the energy distribution of the fast ions, you can see also that effect. And also you can see the three steps uh, at the operational energies of the MBI. And in this upper plot, you can see the, the number of fast ions with respect to the uh, parallel velocity and the minor radius and this is the information that we use to calculate, for example, the neutral beam current drive. We have also calculated the power depositions for these cases. And uh, for the MBI one, we have a power uh, deposited to the ions of 50 kilowatts, more or less in the three cases, although you can see that there's, in both MBIs, there's a slight tendency to, to be reduced. And however, the power deposited to electrons increases uh, with density. And this, well, the, uh, with density, with the, with the higher density, but also with the less temper electron temperature as the critical energy uh, for the particle, for the fast particle injection is proportional to the, to the electron temperature. There's also difference between both MBIs at the, injecting the same power, and I'll explain this different this difference in the next slide. In the, in this slide, uh, I show the results of calculating the neutral beam current drive driven by the by the beam, 
uh, which has two contributions. One is the, the current, mm, the pure current coming from the beam ions and a negative contribution, which appears as, as a response of the plasma, the electrons of the plasma to the injection. Uh, this term, this first term is calculated with, with ASCOT. And the second one is calculated analytically using um, a theoretical model valid in the low collisionality regime and for non-axisymmetric uh, configurations. And we get this expression on the right that says that the neutral beam current drive, or, or better said, the, the beam current is uh, modified with a factor one minus A in weird, where A depends on the geometrical characteristics of the configuration and the set effective of the plasma and, and it's reduced. Uh, in this plot on the, on the left, you can see the current density profile in dashed lines and the integrated one up to the edge of the plasma on solid lines and the values at the edge of that integrated current are shown here in this table. And you can see how the density, the, how the current uh, goes reducing as density increases for both cases in, of the MBIs. Uh, but however, an interesting feature is that the current is non-balanced for both MBI uh, because uh, the MBI one, as you can see in this picture on the right, produces much more prompt losses than the MBI two, which results in less fast ions and uh, less energetic beam, so to speak. That creates less current in the MBI one and also less power depositions as I show in the in the previous slide. One minute more, okay? Yeah, I'm moving into the conclusions. So I uh, present the conclusions. So uh, TG2 has been fully implemented in ASCOT 5. And uh, although in these simulations, we, have a, we haven't taken into account the chalk exchange processes, that's why we, uh, we choose high density plasmas because the importance of these processes are reduced. And, but uh, now there's an ASCOT module that also that takes into account charge exchange reactions and will be used in future studies. And also we are uh, on the way to, to make a validation, uh, an experimental validation of the MBCD model, uh, at least in TG2, accounting for all the, all the current contributions to the plasma, such as flu strap and, and also ECCD if present. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sadiq. We have time for a couple of questions. I don't see any question, however. I'm curious about the reason for the difference in problem losses between MBI 1 and 2. Can you comment? Yes, this is because the, the, I, have a, I don't have pictures to show the effect, but uh, the, the particles coming from the MBI 1 um, suffer a drift towards the edge of the plasma where, the, where in TJ2 there are more space to drift. However, in the, sorry, that, that's in the MBI2. Uh, but in the MBI1, uh, the particles drift uh, to the other direction, let's say, uh, and this is to the hard, hardcore of, the, of TJ2 where they don't have much space to drift at the beginning. And that's why they, there are more particles colliding with the, with the vacuum chamber. Okay, thank you. I don't see any more questions. So we are going to move to the next speaker. Thank you, Sadi, for this talk. Okay. And next speaker is Carlos Daniel Mora Moreno that will talk about geometric injection, sorry, geometric consideration for sonar flow activity and implications for transport modeling. Thank you, Eddie. You uh, want. Introduction. I hope you can see my screen already. So let me start uh, by thanking the organizing committee uh, for giving me, giving me the opportunity to share my research. And also I, I want to thank uh, my awesome colleagues and uh, the computational hours that I received from Eurofusion. 
So let's talk about uh, the geometric implications or considerations for uh, the sonar flow activity in stellarators, particularly in Vendersen 7X. So a bit of a background. Um, we know that turbulence uh, dominates the transport channel. In, uh, particularly in stellarators, it has been shown that, uh, that uh, neoclassical at the moment is not playing uh, the, the interesting role. So we will focus on investigating uh, what is the role of turbulence. And uh, this is already more or less treated in the linear uh, physics and, uh, and successful uh, uh, models for this. But saturation of turbulence, which means uh, the, the, the turbulence levels or, or the transport levels are reaching a, a certain uh, uh, level for, uh, for a, a fair amount of time, is not uh, well understood. So uh, in, uh, in stellarators, we see that the geometry is, is uh, very decisive. And we will use H HPC resources uh, to run the, the, the gene code. This is a gyrokinetic code, uh, quite standard, uh, to, to simulate the gyrokinetic uh, uh, turbulence. And the simulations I'm going to, to, to talk about are ITGs with an adiabatic electron response. Uh, we used uh, a local uh, computational domain, which is a flux tube, uh, which is a little box, uh, uh, computational box around, uh, following a magnetic field line. And our goal is to, to craft an, a nice uh, model that will, it will be able to tell us uh, what is the heat diffusivity in terms only of the geometry and the linear physics. That gets me to the question, then one, what are the geometric features in, in uh, stellarators that influence this turbulence saturation. And uh, uh, I'll be uh, telling you about uh, this geometry, geometry in uh, Wenderstein 7X. Uh, this is the stellarator I, I investigated. I'll tell you uh, gyrokinetic uh, turbulence modeling, the results uh, uh, that, that we have, and what, is, uh, what uh, does it imply for reduced transport uh, modeling. Let's start with the configurations. I used three different uh, configurations within the experimental space of, of, of uh, Wenderstein 7X. And the main parameter that was changed here is the IOTA, the rotational transform, uh, which you can see uh, pictured in, in the upper right corner uh, as, a, as an exaggeration of how does, uh, do these uh, magnetic field lines uh, would look like in uh, following a high IOTA or low IOTA, the rotational transform. And this is important because it will uh, impact directly the sam how, how frequently do we sample the good and bad curvature uh, related to the generation of, of uh, micro uh, of, uh, of of the ITG modes, and uh, the periods of the geodesic curvature. Uh, so let's start by uh, looking at the curvature. We can uh, separate it in in uh, normal and geodesic. Here you can see the normal uh, vectors to a, a, a surface of constant flux, and uh, we can write it uh, in this way. Uh, here you can see the, the magnitude of, of these normal and geodesic curvatures, but how does, the, does this look like uh, in, uh, in our flux tube domain? This is uh, following the magnetic field line, and if we follow uh, this magnetic field line around the torus, then we will see that, uh, that uh, there, there is uh, a different uh, amount of sampling of, of, of these two curvatures. And uh, we'll be uh, treating here the arc length, which is uh, the physical extension of the magnetic field lines uh, around the torus. So let's start with the normal curvature. So the primary modes, uh, the, the driving modes, are localized uh, in, in the regions of, of bad curvature. This means the, the normal curvature, where the normal curvature is negative, which I highlight here in a nice pink. And uh, from theory, we can uh, uh, fit uh, exact uh, eigenfunctions uh, at the center of, of this uh, normal curvature. So bear with me here. We, we will uh, get a Gaussian envelope at the center of, of the normal, curva normal curvature. And this is the, uh, what we will call the drift well. Now let's analyze the geodesic curvature. Here we see that it is periodic around the, the toroidal uh, direction. And we will make a fit. Uh, to extract this, this uh, characteristic length scale of the geodesic curvature. And this is important because it couples the, a particular mode of the, of the electrostatic potential uh, relate, uh, related to the sonar flows. Uh, I, I will talk about that in a couple of slides. And this is, this is a, a, a geometric component that uh, couples uh, this mode to the acoustic wave. So 
uh, remember this uh, characteristic length scale and uh, that I point, uh, point out uh, with pink uh, arrows. And let's see the results. So we have ITGs. And the first uh, natural uh, step that you take to, to, to understand the, the transport is to run linear simulations and to uh, try to predict uh, the transport with the, these linear simulations. This is our quasi-linear uh, model uh, that, that we uh, treated uh, for simplicity. And this involves uh, taking into account uh, all the area under this curve. But we see that uh, this quasi-linear estimate is not uh, successfully uh, uh, predicting the heat diffusivity, but it predicts it in, in, a, in a graceful way. So we, uh, we see that the, that the slope of, of, these, uh, of these curves, that, uh, that uh, when we try to predict the heat diffusivity, are related to the uh, saturation dynamics. And we want to investigate who is the prefactor C1 that we see here. So ITGs. ITGs, we know that uh, these generate uh, uh, sonar flows as a secondary instability. And uh, sonar flows are elongated poloidal uh, structures. Uh, I think uh, we, we've been uh, hearing about uh, these uh, this sonar flows all, all morning. And uh, these have the ability to shear these uh, turbulent eddies, which reduce transport. Interestingly, they are also present in Jupiter, in, uh, which is a geodesic system, uh, planets uh, uh, are geodesic systems. Now, let's uh, simulate uh, nonlinearly an ITG. And we see that when we reach simulation, the saturation, saturation sorry, uh, we, uh, we see that there is uh, certain dynamics, uh, uh, certain timescales related to desaturation. IDGs uh, try, to, try, try to grow and they're kill it, killed by saturation mechanisms. So from, from Tokamax, we uh, understand that these sonar flows play uh, uh, an essential role. And we study sonar flows, first of all, linearly. This is uh, 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 the plot in, in the back is uh, a classic uh, rosenbluth hinton result uh, known colloquially. And this uh, response of the sonar potential has two main characteristics that I will be uh, talking about. First of all, the transient damping uh, and, and then the residual potential. In tokamaks and, and certain kinds of stellarators, we know that this re residual potential is uh, crucial to predict the, the nonlinear uh, sonar flow activity. Uh, but in Venstein 7 x this is zero. And we will be focusing on the transient damping. And we see that the characteristic uh, uh, timescales of this uh, linear response is comparable to the nonlinear uh, saturation timescales. Now, what uh, does it mean uh, to, to have a, a sonar flow uh, in, uh, in a plasma? Uh, we, we see that the, the, that the damping of these sonar flows is related to the geodesic curvature length scale, this LG that we defined before with, with, uh, with a fit to our uh, geodesic curvature. And the important result of, uh, from, from this uh, slide is that low iota has a high damping of sonar flows. And we would expect that uh, low iota has low activity also of, of sonar flows. Uh, and then in the, in the contrary, high iota uh, will, will, uh, will uh, have higher sonar flows uh, because they are uh, damped, damped uh, less damped. So uh, what does it mean if we remove the sonar flows from, from our nonlinear simulations? In, in this manner, we, we investigate how do they impact the saturation uh, or, or, or what is the, 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 their effect for saturation? Uh, we remove the sonar flows, we uh, calculate this, this uh, step that we that we see from from uh, from uh, on saturation when we have the sonar flows and when we remove them, and uh, so we investigate how does this uh, depend on the configuration and the uh, temperature gradient, and what we see here uh, in in this uh, step uh, that we defined is that low iota has uh, 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 depends strongly on sonar flows to reach decent levels or lower levels of saturation. And in the contrary, the high iota case returns after, after growing uh, and, uh, and, and transport returns to, the, to this uh, uh, saturation levels. And uh, this, this means that high iota uh, uh, it has uh, no, no, it doesn't depend strongly on, on, on sonar flows. And this is contrary to what we uh, uh, calculated from the, the linear uh, sonar flow physics. This is interesting. So 
what is going on here? What about sonar flow generation? Uh, and and uh, we know that uh, sonar flows are generated by the primary instabilities. So we go uh, to the, our nonlinear simulations in the presence of, of sonar flows, and we measure uh, uh, how this mode is distributed, the, the turbulent mode along the, the, the direction. And uh, we see that uh, uh, we, we will calculate this with the space filling factor defined like the like the root mean square value of of, uh, of our turbulent mode divided by the by the maximum so we measure peakness with this uh, space space filling factor and we notice that this is a configuration and gradient dependent uh, quantity here for reference i am i am showing you how evenly distributed is in the low iota case and how peaked is in the standard case we One minute, okay yeah once we see that uh, the the and the trend of, of this uh, space filling factor is is uh, is uh, the, the same as in as in our previous results for for the uh, change in diffusivity, and uh, uh, so and in, in the low iota case we observe very uh, evenly distributed modes, evenly distributed modes, and uh, stronger dependence on sonar flows for saturation. So uh, th this is the, the case for low iota. So we go to, to what are the implications for reduced transport. And we will use this quantity LG to, to, to make predictions about the, the sonar flows. And we, this already will improve uh, the phenomenological transport models that we have uh, that are successful already. We will then go to, to the mode spread, uh, the space filling factor, and we will take the drift well uh, as a proxy for this uh, distribution of the mode. And we will try to fix, uh, finally, the quasi-linear estimate. Uh, and I will conclude uh, with this. I will uh, leave you here with, with uh, a summary of, of my talk. And I hope you enjoyed uh, it. Thanks. Thank you. We have time for questions. And we have one. Uh, this is by Jose Regaña. If they are flux tube simulations, since the region that the flux tube samples in the configuration with such different iota values can be completely different, how comparable do you think the results of the high versus the standard iota are actually? Um, we, we see that uh, we don't need, uh, uh, for, for instance, many turbulent, uh, uh, many uh, polyidal uh, turns to, to, to uh, the, the uh, uh, yeah, the mode and, and, and uh, our nonlinear simulations, and this uh, this has already been explored. Uh, how, how how sure are we uh, of these uh, these results? We know that uh, uh, ITGs peak in the outward mid plane, so we we need a minimum uh, a total uh, turn, uh, and uh, we see also that uh, that if you increase this, this resolution, uh, things change. Uh, insignificantly. Uh, I hope you I got uh, your question correctly. Okay, there is a second part of the question. How do you handle to the extent of the flux tube for an iota close to one and an iota far from one? It's computationally expensive. Uh, so uh, th there is a, a parameter that, 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 uh, that, that you can tune uh, uh, in, in gene, but uh, yeah, uh, I would say the the, the 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 simple answer is very large uh, resolution in and the uh, radial uh, dimension in, in the radial direction. Okay. I don't see any other question. Yes, we have one. I know it's not a question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Half. Yeah. Yeah. It's a question. Okay. Have uh, Wenderstein 7x experiments been carried out in these uh, different iotas? And uh, no, no. Uh, these these experiments are are, are uh, well. These these configurations will be used hopefully in the next experimental campaign. That's a great question. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't see any other question. I'll have a yeah. comment. Yeah. I'm surprised because uh, the results that you presented seems to be in contradiction with previous results obtained by Santopoulos and co-workers. 
also in Bender Stein 7X and also with Gene, they found that there is a relationship between the linear uh, decay in the short time, uh, the, the, the decay of the sonar flow and the transport, the heat flux. But you find that there is no relationship between the, these two quantities. Can you comment on this? Yes, indeed, we find an inverse uh, relationship uh, uh, about this. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very uh, surprising result, and there is a paper uh, in preparation uh, regarding that. But uh, that's uh, on point. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. To to you, Carlos, and to all the speakers. And Thank we you. have now a break, a short break, before the next session. See you later. <laughs>